last week was so easy and this week so many things went wrong but I finally solved the problem with my camera so now I am finally filming with my DSLR and I have better audio, better video so I'm really excited this week. A lot of people were interested in skincare so I'm gonna do a skincare video but I'm not gonna do my own routine because Skincare routines are really personal, they're really specific to your skin type and your skin concerns. I took some more generic, more effective things instead of just things that, you know, just do it for me because they might not do it for you. And I thought I would talk about them and explain who they are for so potentially you could look at whether they would suit you as well. So the first product that I'm going to talk about is by Clinique. It is the Moisture Surge Hydrating Supercharged Concentrate. First of all, the pink packaging, I mean, it's so cute. It looks so sci-fi as well because it's like the, I don't know, maybe it's just me. This is the first step in my routine. It is 25 euros. It is a wet gel. It sinks into the skin and kind of leaves your skin feeling moist, but it's not tacky. It's not like sticky or anything. I actually got this at a time where my skincare routine was already very established. I was already using acids. I used niacinamide and arbutin and it was drying out my skin slightly, but it wasn't the oils because I was using more than enough moisturizer, so I knew that it was hydration because your skin needs oil and water. And I had enough oil, so it definitely was water. That's why I got this. It's really good for hydration. There is an entire line by Clinique, the Moisture Surge line. This one is like the most powerful, most pure hydration. So if you have severely dehydrated skin, which I started noticing my skin was dehydrated when Everything was fine except that it just felt tight and it looked dull and it wasn't really flexible and soft So I noticed that I was dehydrated and if you feel like you are severely dehydrated Then this is definitely something you would like other options that are more mild are their moisture surge Just their regular moisturizer and this is more like it's called supercharged. It is supercharged It's a really good boost of hydration after I've done my entire cleansing It's the first thing I just put on my face and it really makes a difference the next product I'm gonna talk about is this, which you really cannot see anything on it anymore because I've worn this out so bad and all the lettering is just gone. It's the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Moisturizer SPF 30. I've used this for a while now. I got it from my mom at first because I read online that SPF is the biggest thing you can add to your skincare routine to just stop your skin from aging and my mom never wears SPF and she has sun allergies so I felt like it would be an appropriate gift to give her that which it really turned out to be. She told me she really loved it and that it just made her skin look amazing and then I was like you know maybe I should try using it as well and I did and I'm really satisfied. Everyone needs to wear SPF. I think it's a really big misconception that because you're dark skinned you don't need SPF that because it's cloudy you don't need SPF you do. The sun's out there and you need it. Doesn't matter how much of the sun you're seeing. It's just, you know, skin cancer. It's signs of aging. There's so many factors that SPF helps and I would recommend at least 30 because anything below that doesn't really do much. This has a lot of product. It's kind of a big bottle and I've only used up about this much and I've had it for a really long time. And that's because this is 125 mils, usually they have 50 mils in moisturizers and I think that is because SPF, it's recommended that you use a lot of it and you don't just use like the tiniest amount to be sparing because it's not going to protect you well. So I feel like they deliberately did that so that people would use enough. It doesn't leave a white cast, it really sinks into the skin nicely, it does leave your skin kind of, you know, wet looking but I feel like most SPFs do that. It is the final step of my routine, not the final anymore because now after it, I add another SPF, which is SPF 50, but it used to be the last step of my routine. Sun scare should always be the last step of your routine before primer and then makeup because it needs to be on the surface to protect you. I recommend this for people who are looking for a moisturizer and SPF in one because it's a really good product. It doesn't leave white cast. It performs well under makeup. The only thing is that if you're really oily skinned, you might want to look at a mattifying moisturizer because it suits you better. The next product I'm going to talk about is also really used up. Now, I am legit about the products that I'm talking about, and otherwise I wouldn't show them on here. It's the green clay mask from the Downen, which is the Dutch version of Holland & Barrett, which you have in the UK as well, but they don't sell this. As you can see, it's really beat up. It's just almost gone, but... 
I have a backup because these are always on discount. So I bought this way back before I was really into skincare. I've already finished up a 100 milliliter tube and then I finished up a 200 milliliter one, which you just saw. I picked this up because in the store there was a lot of advertising for it. They were saying it won some awards. It's very comparable to the Indian clay mask. If you're not from Holland, you can try something like that. But I've just really enjoyed this formula. It does a lot for me. It's only 15 euros for 200 milliliters. It is very thick. It is not that wet. It's not that like watery and runny at all. At first it starts stinging quite badly and you think it's irritating you. But for me, that's personally not true because after about half a minute, the stinging goes away and it becomes so cooling and refreshing. And it's really easy to wash off. It kind of crumbles and then rolls off, it doesn't hurt. I would recommend to patch test this to know whether it irritates you. It's very drying, so if you have very dry skin, I definitely don't recommend it. The town also has a white and a red clay one, which are for more sensitive people. So you can look into that one in that case. But if you have acne, I definitely recommend this. It's, I use it twice a week after cleansing, before putting on all my products. It's a really effective product and it's really affordable. The next products I'm gonna talk about are the Ordinary Azelaic Acid and Niacinamide, which I have right here. These are also pretty much used up, but again, I have backups. I know what I like. So the combination of these two really help my skin. I don't know which of the two products does what because I started using them around the same time. But I can say that it improved my redness, it improved my texture, it made my pores look really tiny and my skin is so smooth now. It hasn't stopped my acne because I only have hormonal breakouts and hormonal breakouts are inevitable. The only thing you can do about them is change your hormones, which I am on hormonal birth control so I can't really change anymore about it. It doesn't stop the breakouts but what it does is reduce that redness and make the breakouts less severe. I now get way smaller bumps, they're much less red and even when I get breakouts they're just much less visible. I really recommend both of these. I am gonna talk more in depth about The Ordinary soon. I think I'm gonna do a video reviewing the products that I like and talking about products that I didn't like. Now first of all the niacinamide let me read this it's a water-based serum that improves blemishes and large pores and oily skin and improves tone and texture and redness niacinamide is vitamin b3 this is a serum that costs 5 euro 90 which means it's pretty affordable it's gel like it has a very clouded color and even though it sinks into the skin it kind of gives your skin this tacky tight layer as well so I wouldn't like using this by itself but obviously you're not gonna use it by itself because you need your moisturizer and your SPF and I feel like it layers perfectly with those and that makes it okay again it has a hygienic dropper really clean because you never put your fingers into it you only take things out if you did science in high school, you know that's the way you're supposed to go because it doesn't contaminate anything. It's lasted me about two and a half months so far. I've used this twice a day for that entire time. I've never skipped it. After I use Arbutin, I apply this and then I apply my moisturizer. I would recommend this serum to anyone, kind of. It's a really generic serum. The only thing you have to watch out with is whether it dries your skin. So the only people I wouldn't recommend it to is really dry skinned people, again, because you can be sensitive and you're gonna need a lot of hydration and moisturization to cover up the impacts. But in general, it's such a simple formula. Of course, you still have to patch test. You never know what you're gonna be sensitive towards. But I feel like this one is really generic, suits a lot of skin types. This product is also vegan. Most of, I think, if not all of the ordinary products are vegan. And then moving on to azelaic acid. Azelaic acid does kind of the same things as niacinamide. It's more geared towards actual blemishes, whereas niacinamide not necessarily fighting blemishes. Now, azelaic acid is not the most effective thing for fighting acne. You would probably benefit more from salicylic acid, but I feel like the combination of these two for people who have issues like me, I think this is really effective. It is a gel cream. I really like the texture, but because it sinks into your skin, like really sinks into your skin, when you're applying it, you know, it's like gone and then you're like pulling your skin. So I can imagine that it kind of feels strange because your skin just feels so... I don't know, but it doesn't create any layer on top of your skin that's like greasy or oily or whatever because it sinks into the skin really well. If you're using an acid, definitely use sunscreen and definitely do your research. You have to know what you're doing. It comes in a hygienic tube. Nothing goes in, only things come out, which is really hygienic, which is what you want to do with your skin to not get more blemishes. It's going to last me about three months, I think, just like the niacinamide. And I use this 
two days in a row and then I use lactic acid one day and then I use this two days in a row again so four to five days a week I use azelaic acid and I use this in the evening. Now I would recommend azelaic acid because it targets generic skin concern unless you feel like it might sensitize your skin. If you have severely sensitive skin there's a big likelihood that it's not going to suit your skin so just beware of that and this product is vegan. I wanted to thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this kind of content. If you're not confused about your skincare routine, how to incorporate these products or what you really need, then don't worry. I'm starting a skincare series soon where I'm going to talk about how to build a routine, talk about what kind of actives to use and how to use them to really get back to the basics. I'm doing a lot of research for that because, you know, your skin, you don't want to damage it. I want to be really careful about the things I recommend, but I am going to start that. The products on my face and the products that I mentioned in the video are listed in the description box. Let me know what your game changers have been and whether you have tried any of the products I have mentioned. The next video is going to be about affordable beauty favorites. People really like that idea as well so I'm gonna talk about the nicest products you can get for a small price thanks for watching like subscribe help me spread the word and I'll see you in the next video